Well hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I uh, hope everyone's safe and well and um, obviously unfortunately I can't get to the boats so the boats have taken their chance at the moment in time. Um, I had planned to do a lot of videos, I've got a lot of work coming up this spring but obviously that's all have to be put on hold which you know I don't mind. I fully understand you know we've been asked to stay at home and I'm just doing that. Um, I've not been even out on my um, bikes so there again um, that's why you know there's been nothing, I haven't done any videos on those. Um, so, um, so I hope everyone's keeping safe and well and um, during these difficult times I thought um, I've got plenty of time on my hands at the moment so I thought uh, whilst I've got nothing better to do so to speak I th dug an old television out of my collection or pile waiting to do or if I ever got round to it pile and um, I thought I'd see um, in this time how far I could get um, I did record this a few weeks ago, I did start this a couple of weeks ago, this restoration, and I did record an intro then, but it seems out of date already because I haven't posted any videos about this yet. So um, I thought I'd do a, a new little intro and just say that, um, you know, uh, see how far we get. The, the perhaps the idea, I'm, I'm not, it's got a wooden cabinet, as you'll see on the set. Um, I'm not too worried about doing anything at that at the moment. I would just like to see if we can get first and foremost a picture on it. Is it worth, is it worth, you know, we'll have a look over in this video, we'll have a look over it and I'll see basically is it worth even trying to restore it because certain televisions there again um, maybe aren't but um, so uh, I hope people enjoy it. It's just it's just me fiddling about as usual, rambling on as I normally do. Um, uh, but um, I wish you all well in these difficult times. And as I say, without further ado, um, we'll move on. Um, and I'll show you the set, and uh, we'll take it from there. And just say, see how far we get with this, or how far I can get with this, and see if I can get a picture up and running uh, of some description back on this set. Uh, so the set um, I've looked out um, is the one in front of us and, and this is a um, Pi uh, FV1 model, obviously this is the tabletop uh, version of it, they did a, a console set in, the, in this model as well and this date, well it was released, the release date of this was in April 1951 and it cost the grandiose sum then of around about 48 pounds 11 shillings and nine old pence so um it certainly wasn't cheap um back in 1951 uh i'm not sure how long the model you know continued but i it wouldn't have been many years televisions were changing rapidly television um you know um the whole build and the whole way they were put together and the valves that were used were constantly very much like today if you think of mobile phones and computers how things have moved on very quickly um so televisions uh, that didn't mean to say back then obviously somebody invested nearly 50 pounds in this set um an awful lot of money in those days so th the people would try and keep that set running as long as possible you know who knows this this set might have gone on 10 15 years longer or you know it had it it might might have had a shorter life than that um i do know again it's a local set it was local very much to this area of northampton where i live another set um believed to be bought from uh, a local telev television shop in northampton on the market square called abel's um, that I do know. Um, the other thing I know, it was it was given to me. I haven't paid any money for this set. Um, a very kind gentleman. I, I used to belong to. Well, I, I still do, um, but I used to be more active in it. Um, our local heritage society. Um, a, a guy found this in his parents' um, house loft and said would I like it he was going to take it to the tip and I said oh don't do that and that was many many years ago I've had this set in it's in, in dry storage it's not been anywhere damp I think um, the cabinet isn't in the best of conditions and um, we'll have a lo look at that closer perhaps in another video the as I say um, 
And I have no idea how long they used it, why it stopped, or even if it's restorable, is the tube any good? Um, the first thing I do, if when I'm, and I have to say, I don't know how far we're gonna get with this because it's a long while since I've restored a television and, and television, for me, um, it takes, you know, you, there's a lot there to get your head round. Um, the first thing I do um, very much is I like to get as much data as I possibly can. So I've got the um, 30 page actual pie, um, which was obviously given to um, the service shops. So I've got the, you know, um, which is which is very, in, you know, um, obviously that is very complete and very thorough and tells you just about everything you'd ever want to know about this set. So I've got that and I've all, all I all, so like to work um, for quick reference off the um, off the service trader sheets, which is about four pages. And um, obviously, there we go. That's reference to this set, um, the FE1 and the FE1C. The C denoting there, the C denoting that it was a console is the bit bigger model that stood on the floor. So I've got the data, and. The, well, I'll turn it round if we have a look inside in a minute. The chassis is quite rusty, as you'd expect. As I say, I think it's been many, many years, um, probably not in the most driest of loft, because it has up here, um, uh, on this corner here, it has had a little bit of what I can assume is water damage um, over the years. But overall, there's no woodworm in it. There's little bits of veneer missing, but we're not going to, I'm not going to concentrate too much on the cabinet apart from giving it a good dust. It's got cobwebs where I've had it stored. Um, we're not going to concentrate on that too much. Uh, it's more obviously in the internals. So I'll now turn the set round and um, show you what you're faced with, um, you know, when you want to try and bring it out or bring a very old television which is what um could be it could equally be 69 years old um it's like april 51 this was first released uh, in this country so yeah all right i'll stop rambling as i do and uh, we'll turn it around and i'll show you the internals so there we go we've I've turned the set round now and we can see obviously there again don't know how well or close in you'll see there um, I'll try and um, I'll take the camera off the tripod in a minute and, and zoom in a little bit closer. But I mean, the set is um, incredulously dirty. Uh, it looks as though to me it could have well been in a house, as a lot were, where it was quite near the fireplace, because it looks as though we've got a lot of um, quite black, almost sooty. I've had that before, you know. Obviously, uh, in the 50s, um, well on into the 60s, and even into the 70s, you know. Um, in this village um, there wasn't a lot of central heating you know it was um, you had a coal fire still and obviously the front room was where the television was and obviously that did generate a certain amount of soot um, and I think it's just you know it, it, it's basically never been touched it's been um, you know I've took the back off and this is the first time I've even looked in the back um, I don't think I even looked in the back when I got the set I, I, um, I wrapped it up I always put things in black plastic really thick black plastic sacks because if they have got woodworm obviously that isolates them and um, it's been well dry stored wrapped up ever since then um, and obviously there, there, there is not that's the one blessing with this set there isn't any sign of woodworm uh, woodworm seems to they seem to have loved these televisions whether it was the um, the ply whether it was the glue whether it was just because they got really warm inside and the cottages or houses were damp then and it was the ideal conditions for woodworm to come in and obviously there's probably woodworm in the cottages anyway um, but this one hasn't suffered so that, that's really good um, all the valves are there uh, apart from the um, PL33 which is a sound output valve which I think I've got a brand new one of those and of course the other problem is Having not done any restorations um, recently, I think I'm going to be somewhat limited to parts that I've got, um, partic particularly on the electrolytic capacitors. And I don't know at this moment in time how uh, things are going to equate to ordering online or if things are going to be delivered or they're not. So we'll have to look into that one. You know, um, might not get very far at this moment in time, but it, it's just something to do um, and have a look at this. And I, I thought it might be of interest to some people out there. Um, you know how to go about obviously there again I have to say this you know if you're not au fait 
and you don't understand electricity or the dangers of repairing anything this this has the potential to be a live chassis um, you know and it's I think this one's got about 9 kilovolt uh, ET EHT extra high tension uh, you know for the tube um, so obviously there's lots of things that you could give yourself a nasty shock if you don't know what you're touching or doing um, so always beware of that um, definitely uh, so yeah um, I'll just quickly show you in a little bit more close-up detail of you know as I say you can see this set hasn't been touched this is the first time you know um, that I've looked in the back obviously chassis and, and parts are quite rusty quite normal um, I'm not one of these people that likes to take everything off the chassis and clean it all up and make it shiny um, as long as I get all the dust and dirt off it and you know the connections are good that's that's quite good enough for me I'm, I'm not one of these people that like to over restore things you know I'm basically going to try and make this restore to get a picture back on this I, d I don't want it to look showy or anything you know as I say obviously you know you want to get all the dust and dirt out out of the, the set definitely um, and Pi gave the Pi always had these nice blue um, like little plates metal plates which I think are quite good because it gives you the type of the receiver and it gives you the the pins that you put in for different power supplies obviously this was for AC and in in those far off days we still had parts of the UK that were powered by DC um, mains you know electricity in their houses so you could either or interchange on this set um, those long gone days um, so yeah as I say looking at it and the, the tube looks original um, I think it's the I'll have to look I'll have to look up what tube it is it's um it's a mullard tube and I can still see the blue um, if we can look in there I can still see the blue mullard label on the tube so it still looks its original tube I don't think that has been changed so yeah right I'll get the um, valve test sorry not the valve tester the um, CRT tester set up now and um, we'll have a run through on that and see what we see what we achieve if we achieve anything.